How are you guys? Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't know about this sound system. I, I think I could actually uh, speak to all of you without it, but I guess we need it for CVTV, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it. Good morning. How are you guys? I want to congratulate all of you on your participation in the democratic process this morning. Participation breeds understanding. Your decision to be here today demonstrates your support for our shared society and your commitment to its improvement. I thank you all for that. The 2010 elections will take place against the backdrop of both concern and disappointment this year. Concern about where our economy has brought us and disappointment that so many of our hopes and dreams from two years ago have yet to be realized. By this time, we had hoped for reform of our financial industries, progress toward addressing the challenges of climate change, and genuine restructuring of our health care delivery system. We had hoped to see clear signs that our elected representatives were representing our best values and interests, not those of powerful and wealthy corporations. We feel disappointed because we have been disappointed. No sooner did we attempt to address our problems than Republicans and so-called moderate Democrats realized they could gain more politically by sowing fear and distrust among us than by serving the American people. We shouldn't despair so much that those we trusted with change have faltered. Instead, we should encourage those who still promote change by demanding they continue to promote change. Despite the difficult political backdrop this year, I'm not willing to go into retreat and I'm not willing to give up on the opportunities for the future. I stand here today determined to join with other progressives in Washington, D.C. to continue to fight for genuine change we can all believe in. The late U.S. Senator Paul Wellstone once said, if we don't fight hard enough for the things we stand for, at some point, we have to recognize that we don't really stand for them. As an elected official for the past 12 years, it's been my honor to fight hard for the things I've stood for. Those beliefs are reflected in my public record as a Washington State Senator and as a Clark County Commissioner. They're reflected in my four years of service as a soldier in the United States Army. They reflect the humble aspirations of a Southwest Washington boy who never had access to power or wealth and whose only hope for the future lay in making a commitment to hard work and integrity, and learning to lean on the support of his family, and on realizing that his only hope for receiving help for himself lay in learning to give help and assistance to others. Those same beliefs reflect the progressive values that have long stood at the heart of the Democratic Party that I stand for today. Like most of you, I am a child of the village. Like most of you, I am here today because I want to strengthen that village, not destroy it. I stand for the rights of working people to fair compensation for their labor, for a working environment that keeps them safe from injury first and cares for them when the inevitable accidents do occur. And I stand for rights to collectively organize in a workplace free from harassment or coercion. I stand for a societal safety net that protects our most vulnerable citizens from abuse and our working families from difficult economic times that were not of their making. I stand for environmental policies that protect the health of human beings from toxins and decay today while preserving our natural world for future generations tomorrow. I stand for quality and affordable health care that I believe will only be provided through a single-payer system. I stand for a woman's right to choose. I stand for the rights of gays and lesbians to the benefits of marriage and to serve in the same military that I served in. I stand for an educational system that responds to the academic and emotional needs and challenges of each and every student, not to the arbitrary dictates of a single standard or a single educational theory. I stand for a constitutionally mandated balanced budget that ensures that Americans today pay for the benefits they receive and don't pass those burdens on to future generations. I stand for a constitutional amendment that makes it indisputably clear to this United States Supreme Court that if there is nothing in the United States Constitution that even remotely suggests that multinational corporations are human beings.
I stand for fair trade agreements that hold all nations to high standards of employee rights, human rights, environmental protections, and open currency valuations. I stand for uniform. I stand for uniform and consistent regulation of the free market that holds all businesses to the same standard of fairness, of accountability, and of responsibility for their failures. No working person, no working person should ever have to pay for the laziness, greed, or corruption of his bosses. I stand for American foreign policy that recognizes that our safety and prosperity as a nation depends on the safety and prosperity of all nations. Rather than empowering them with the instruments of war, we would do better to empower their women with the right to vote, to empower their workers with the right to organize, and to empower their children with the gifts of nutrition, education, health care, and those basic human needs. And those basic human needs that all people must seek and must fight for if they are denied. I will remain consistent with these values in the future, just as I have in the past. You don't need to take my word for it. You can look at my public record. I didn't adopt my values because I joined the Democratic Party. I joined the Democratic Party because, on paper at least, it already reflected my own beliefs. Beliefs mined from the earth as a descendant of Kentucky coal miners, beliefs nurtured at the knees of a Camas mill worker and a Vancouver school teacher, beliefs forged by a lifetime of public service and commitment, beliefs tempered by experience and self-sacrifice. I ask you to stand with me in the weeks and months ahead not because I fight for the things I believe in, but because I have fought for and will continue to fight for the things we believe in. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your service to the people. Thank you.